Motion. Schobert. Second. Zerflin. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, any opposed? Okay, motion carried. Who's looking at that? All right, the next item on the agenda is election of the chairperson and vice chairperson for this year. I'll make a motion that you be continue to be our chairperson and Steve be our vice chair. I'll second that, sure. Any discussion? Other than that, I can only fulfill that position until August. <laughs> right. <laughs> so this is Schrader with staff, assuming this motion passes at the point that the chair's uh, term would step down, then per the bylaws, the vice chair would step up and we would need a motion at that time to appoint a new vice chair. Discussion. It's yours. Was there a second? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We're here. Brandon. Brandon. Okay, sorry. Philip, actually. Philip. Yep. Oh. Second by Philip. You want to fill her in on what we're about to vote yeah, on? Yeah, we're we're just in time for a vote on chairperson and vice chairperson. Mm -hmm. Yep. There you are. <laughs> yep. Right. The motion is yep for. Me until August, and then Steve is vice, and that would mean that then in August he would become he would move up to chair. chairperson, and then there need to be a motion for a replacement vice chair. All right, all those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion is carried. Um, and then next we'll have approval of the minutes of the regular meeting on December 13th. Any revisions besides Patricia's name? <laughs> I think it said it before the meeting. So I don't know about it. <laughs> so moved, Schilberg. Second, Zerflin. Okay. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. The minutes are approved. Next, we'll have the financial report for November of 2022, please. This is Schrader with staff. So this financial report would put us at 42% of the fiscal year. Looking down the expense sides, most of them are right at 40 or 41%. So we're looking good on expense. And on the revenue side, looking down the subtotals, 34, 38, 76, and grand uh, total of 16. So a little low on the revenue side, but that does fluctuate. So no concerns. Any questions? Okay, do we have a motion to receive and place this on file? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is time for oral presentations. Um, this is a time for anyone in the chambers who's here to speak on an item that's not already on the agenda. Thank you. Anyone? Here. Dave both. Yep. Go ahead, Councilman. Madam Chair. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I, I wanted to speak about the uh, flagpole cellular tower on the east end of Waterloo when you're coming in by Astro. It's my understanding that planning and zoning needs to do something uh, in order for uh, a stationary flagpole to, to be put in place. They, the original agreement with U.S. Cellular was to allow them to put a uh, cell tower up there that looked like a flagpole, and Leisure Services supplies the flag and takes it up and down. Then they rebuilt that cell tower and made the tower too big to accommodate a flag. And U.S. Cellular has agreed to put uh, standalone flag 
impact holes in that area, but it requires action from this board according to Noel. So I would hope that we could move forward with this. We've been out without a flag out there uh, for over a year now. So if, if this is something that, the, that we could look at putting on a, a future agenda, agenda, I would sure appreciate it. This is Schrader with staff. I'm, I'm familiar with the um, issue you're talking about. Um, I was not familiar with um, their uh, needing to be action of the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission. So we'll look at that. And yeah, if an action item is, we'll be sure to get that on a, uh, a future agenda. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, anyone else on Zoom or by phone to speak on a non agenda item? Okay. The time is 4.06 p.m. and a hearing is scheduled at this time for a request by Jason Fowler to rezone approximately 0 0.28 acres from Commercial 1 Commercial District to C1 CZ Conditional Commercial, Commercial District to construct a vehicle storage facility located east of 709 Dearborn Avenue. This is on pages 12 through 20 of the packet. At this time, we should receive in place on file a statement of verification signed by Patty McGee stating, I, Patty McGee, do hereby certify that a copy of the attached letter, overview map, aerial maps, notice map, were mailed to individuals on the attached list on December 22nd, 2022. Can we have a motion to receive in place this notice on file? So moved. Schoberg? Second. Parrish? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we will have the staff report, please. This is Dornoff with staff. The applicant is requesting a rezone of site in question to allow for construction of a vehicle storage facility. The site is predominantly surrounded by vacant land and residences, plus a new facility being built by A-Line ADS, being constructed south of Dearborn Avenue. Rezoning the property to C1CZ would not appear to have a negative impact on the area as the area is currently zoned for commercial uses and the use would appear to be similar to recently approved um, for the rezones of to C1CZ on June 1st and December 5th, 2022. The proposed rezone area is currently zoned C1 Commercial District, zoned as such since adoption of zoning ordinance 2479 in 1969. Surrounding land uses and their zoning to, are as follows to the north a creek vacant land zone C1 commercial district to the south, a residence, a new A-line storage facility zone C1 commercial district and C1 CZ conditional commercial district to the east is vacant land and industrial zone C1 commercial district and M1 light industrial district and to the west is a residence and a creek zone C1 commercial district. Um, the area is prim composed primarily of vacant land with a few residences built between 1929 and 1980 and Cedar Valley Storage to the southeast built in 2004 and several industrial uses including A-Line EDS. Um, screening would be required along the west property line to separate the residential uses from the warehouse um, area. A six foot chain link fence may be acceptable if sufficient trees are maintained to buffer the use. The CZ Conditional Zoning District is classification allows uses in unique locations or transitional sites between different land uses. The applicant is requesting constructive vehicle storage yard. The storage area will be needed to be fenced with a fence on the west side placed at least five feet from the property line along with a buffer of trees or shrubs to buffer from the single family home to the west. The site has a lot of existing trees so potentially existing trees can be maintained in the area within the setback area to provide the buffer. While there are three homes in the immediate area, two rezones were recently approved in the last six months, allow line ADS to construct a new 24,000 square foot storage facility just south of the homes to, um, to the south and where there was no opposition. Hard servicing would be required for the driveway approach and parking requirements. The applicant intends to request a variance from the Board of Adjustment to allow for a gravel or recycled asphalt in the storage area. Staff is not opposed to this request. The Board of Adjustment did request, um, did approve a similar request at their October 25th, 2022 meeting. Because there's no office, there will be no customer parking requirements. 
Therefore, staff recommends that the request by Jason Fowler to rezone approximately 0 0.28 acres from C1 Commercial District to C1CZ Conditional Commercial District to construct a vehicle storage facility located east of 709 Dearborn Avenue be approved for the following reasons. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on traffic conditions in the area. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding area. And the request is in conformance with the future land use map and um, comprehensive land use plan with the following conditions that the final site plan meets all applicable city codes, regulations, et cetera, including but not limited to parking, landscaping, screening, drainage, et cetera, except as approved by a variance by the Board of Adjustment. That the west fence line be set back five feet from the property line with a buffer between the fence and the property line to the west made up of existing or newly planted trees and there is no storage of junk vehicles, equipment, or parts. We did receive a call from an attorney representing the applicant, the um, homeowner to the south, who did have concerns about junk vehicles. So we had already intended to put that condition on there, but just to let you know there was that call about it. They didn't say, Eric talked to him more, but he didn't say he was opposed or approved of it so we never really got straight up he just asked a lot of you know the basic questions oh are you okay <laughs> okay so we'll hear from the resident after <laughs> all right any initial questions for john from the commission okay i do have one question with the parameters around the buffer with trees and stuff like that the site plan has to show it but like who's who's verifying that that's actually been done in the end um that would be a responsibility of the building department make sure that they meet the requirements or engineer depending on what part of it is you know they're we're looking at okay any other initial questions okay is mr fowler here yes. okay Please come forward, state your name and address, and then okay. you can. Uh, Jason Fowler, 302 Frank Street, Waterloo, Iowa, Fowler 703. Okay. Is there anything in particular you want us to know about the uh, request? Yeah, it's just, uh, I'm not, it's not going to be, nothing there is going to be uh, anything that's that's junk or anything like that. It's going to be uh, strictly boat and RV storage. So it would be running licensed, you know, they'd be running in, you know, all that stuff, vehicles that they'd be bringing in, just renting a parking spot for me. So for the, you know, just for the neighbor, and I would be willing to do whatever, you know, is necessary for the state, uh, for the city to uh, accomplish making it a very nice place. And, you know, with uh, all the, you know, go, working with Eric's Rotary, Rotary to try and get everything like, just like you guys want it. So, so you're aware of the buffer request? Yes, I am. Okay. Yep, yep. And then you know how the fences would have to be up, and then the trees. We talked about that, and, and you know how the uh, the approach and all that stuff. So yes. Okay. Any initial questions for Mr. Fowler? Anyone on Zoom? Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Anyone else in the chambers? I'll have you come up and state your name and address, please. Hi, sorry, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> um, my name is Beth Camp, and I live at 722 Dearborn with my husband. Um, we, I've lived there for the last 22 years. He's lived there since about 1994. Um, what we're looking at is, is it even... I guess I'm just going to read my notes. He did answer a little bit, but that way I can get what I, yep. how I'm dealing out, okay? Um, what I'm looking at is I'm thinking it's more of a proposed mini junkyard. Um, it's not consistent with our neighborhood. Um, I looked it up, I work at a law firm. Um, the property taxes haven't even been paid on this in September. So how do we know that he's going to do and fulfill what he needs to do when he hasn't even paid the $31 in property tax? Um, code enforcement, I know has been called on him before. Um, if I'm, if my memory serves me right, and I could be wrong, um, a year and a half ago, I believe he had parked a camper in the adjacent lot and, um, code enforcement had to be called several times before it was finally moved. So we're a little concerned about the stormwater retention. 
um, groundwater contaminants because there are going to be vehicles and things parked there. Um, it's also going to be a breeding ground for vermin and rodents. Um, it is a dead end, um, unpaved one lane road. I mean, it's not gravel, but it's like that gravel with a layer over the top. I don't know what that's called. Mm -hmm. Sorry. That's right. um, Chips, yeah. It's going to be unattended. So, which in my mind, um, I've lived there, like I said, we've had a couple of little incidences with people from the trailer park across that have come that I've had to call. Mm -hmm. um, but with it being unattended and unmonitored, is it going to attract vandals and thieves into our neighborhood? Um, he did answer this, it's monthly fee or is it just like a pay and drop? Um, you know, he did say that they were running and it's gonna be boat and campers. Um, but where are they coming from? Who owns them? Are they insured? Are they licensed? Um, uh, our fear um, as neighbors, I talked to a couple of them, is that is it going to turn into a salvage or junkyard down the road? Um, since it's not fenced on the one side, is he going to start putting things into that, that um, tree line? I mean, I just lost. And I mean, I'm all for, you know, A-Line being able to build behind my house. Um, but they paid for trees to come up with my property just to make it look better. I know they're fencing um, almost three sides of my yard to block it for me, for us. They worked with us. Um, you know, what happens down the road several years when he leaves town or does whatever, and we've got a bunch of abandoned vehicles there. I don't think the city or code wants to be in that type of a business. Um, I love my neighbors and I love my neighborhood. Um, and I just feel this isn't a good fit. Um, doing a little bit more research, and I don't even know if this is feasible. Um, he is currently in on parole. Um, and I believe that planning and zoning is for the betterment of the community. And I do not feel that this is for the betterment of the community. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much for your time and consideration. Any questions for Ms. Camp? Just one minute here. Which house is yours? I live um, south. So mine's, my, it, from the picture, it almost looks like the drive, like it's right in front of my house. Okay, so you live directly south. In front of it, yep. Okay. And then and is yours just residential? There's no commercial, anything okay. around on your property or no Correct. extra storage facilities? Is there, okay, it's hard to tell from this picture. No, I mean, we have a little... My husband calls it his Harley shed next to the driveway. We do have a pool that's coming out in the spring. Okay. Um, and then the other residential is two lots over from yours on the end? Correct. Okay. And then there's one across the street, obviously yep. next to him. Okay. Yeah, because we have the whole lot in our, our lot goes all the way. We have almost an acre. It goes to the to Rook Road. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Anyone on Zoom have any questions? Okay, thank you. Rod, go up to address some of her concerns. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Come back up. Um, okay, so with uh, some of her concerns on that, um, I, I have funding to actually have it good, uh, like done my aunt and is gonna back me on the funding. So it's gonna be professionally done and it's gonna be like a business where it's, it's not gonna be any junkyard ever. I'm not gonna let that happen. I mean, it's gonna be a business that, you know, like just regular RV storage is. It's gonna be paved with asphalt um, and it's gonna have a fence. Um, and I would be willing to work with uh, all the neighbors uh, to make sure that uh, it's what they want, you know, that it's going to meet their what they would like to see, too. This so, shared with staff. I assume you were proposing to chain link fence yeah. all the way around it, yeah. right? Yeah. Yep. And what what is the requirement for stormwater detention, or what does that look like for him? I'll let I'll let Mr. Knutson talk about. It. Jamie Knutson, city engineer. <clears throat> um, at this point, he would have to meet 
the requirements of our stormwater ordinance. We haven't seen anything yet as far as a site plan or anything. So um, we'll review that like anything else as it comes through, so. Okay, and with that, do you, with the final approval, then does he have to show any financials that he actually has the funding to do this? To con no, not not for okay. not for engineering, not for our stormwater detention. No. This is Commissioner Wilbur, <coughs> and in regards to um, a junkyard or a, a lot to store junk vehicles, that would require a special permit, correct? This is Schrader with staff, yes. To be a uh, recycling junk or salvage yard does require special permit approval. There's also um, quite a bit of restrictions on that, including a minimum five acre lot size. So this site would not meet those criteria. Okay. If they, if it was deemed to be that not you, but somebody down the road or something was doing that sort of thing, what would be, I mean, code enforcement would cite them and then what would be the steps? Yep, this trader was staff. So if this were approved and the uh, storage yard established and there were um, some junk vehicles or unlicensed vehicles that were being stored there, Yep, the process would be to uh, submit a complaint to the code enforcement department who would go and investigate, uh, issue a notice, and they usually give a, a certain day period to uh, for the property owner to correct, um, or then they would issue a citation. Um, is there anyone else in the chambers who's here to speak on this agenda item? Is there anyone else on Zoom or by phone who is present to speak on this agenda item? Great. Does the commission have additional questions or do we want to have a motion to close the hearing? I'll move, so moved to close the hearing. Okay. Second, Chobler. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so the public hearing is closed. Is there a motion from the commission? Can I just ask one more question? Eric, is the rest of the lots in this area, like why are there a couple of residential right in the middle of all that seems like surrounded by a bunch of commercial? Was that switched at some point to it was mostly primarily residential start and converted to commercial do we know the history over here this is Schrader with staff I, I don't know the history on that um, the area uh, west of roof Avenue which is the north south street there just to the east the area uh, west of that um, has been zoned C1 um, commercial district since adoption of the zoning ordinance. I'm not exactly sure on the history on that since um, the homes um, predate that. The area to the east is all zoned industrial. Um, I'm, my only guess would be is they kind of looked at it as a good transition with the mobile home park to the north and industrial uses to the east. Um, they maybe thought it was a good transition area for some commercial zoning, but there historically hadn't been anything but the few homes there until more recently when we did um, the rezone to allow, allow AD, A line EDS to expand into the, a, a large portion of that uh, area west of Roof, south of Dearborn, excluding those two houses. So, and A line EDS also owns that house on the north side of Dearborn west of the proposed rezone. They own that house. They own that house and rent it or allow an employee to live there. And if I recollect, nobody showed up to oppose their rezone. Correct. Okay.
Do we have a motion from the commission? drainage question. Um, I'm assuming with these conditions that were listed, final site plan meet applicable city code regulations. It doesn't appear to me on the um, site plan that if there is some type of detention pond required, there's really no room for it right now. Uh, this is Schrader with staff. Um, they're not showing that it is just a conceptual site plan for okay. the rezone purposes. The final site plan will have to show how it meets that. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a separated uh, detention area. There are some times um, where they will design the parking lot to basically be the depression itself. And if you spread it out over the entire area, that may mean <clears throat> that you're only you know less than a foot deep in total water in the middle, and, and that might not be ideal. The other alternatives would be to yeah, kind of shift the parking lot and leave an area um, that would actually be created as a depression, or another option would be to put the detention completely underground in chambers. That certainly tends to be more expensive than the other options, yeah. but yeah. And this is Commissioner Wilbur. For the final site plan, then, do you, the adjoining property owners um, get notice of that? This is Schrader with staff. Um, no, that's just the um, administrative okay. submittal and review and approval process. Okay. Any additional questions for staff? Do we have a motion from the commission? This is Schoberg. I'll move that we approve the request by Jason Fowler to rezone approximately 0.28 acres from C1 commercial district to C1 CZ commercial conditional commercial district with the following conditions that the final site plan meets all applicable city building codes regulations etc including but not limited to parking landscaping screening drainage etc except as approved by variance from the board of adjustment that the west fence line be set back five feet from the property line with a buffer between the fence and the property line to the west made up of existing or newly planted trees and that there is no major, there is no storage of junk vehicles, equipment, or parts. We have a second. I'll second it, sir. Frame. Okay. Any further discussion by the commission? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. So the motion is is carried. Yep. So the motion is carried. The request will. This is just a recommendation. The request will um, go on to the city council. Um, an exact um, date hasn't been scheduled yet, but probably four to six weeks is usually the time frame. You can check with us. Okay. Thank you, everyone. All right, the next item on the agenda is a request by the City of Waterloo to vacate 0.8 acres of a right-of-way in front of the former Kmart Shopping Center located at 3810 University Avenue, commonly referred to as the University Avenue Frontage Road. We have the staff report, please. This is blank with staff. The applicant is requesting to vacate a portion of University Avenue Frontage Road just northeast of the Progress Avenue intersection with University Avenue. The request to vacate the portion of former frontage road would help with redevelopment efforts of the former Kmart site. The former Kmart site and a few surrounding properties will be reconfigured and become University Progress Additions, so there is no reason for public right-of-way in this area. The request to vacate would not appear to have a negative impact on vehicular traffic in the area as additional traffic movements have been constructed have been constructed, including a right-in, right-out from this site. The new University Avenue trail system is built along the southern side of University Avenue, just south of this request. 
This new trail connects with the Green Hill Road Trail and the Sargent Road Trail. There is also sidewalk along University Avenue, but no sidewalks along Progress Avenue. Sidewalks should be required along Progress Avenue as part of the proposed development. The site has been zoned C2 Commercial District since the adoption of the zoning ordinance in 1969. To the north is Commercial Building. Uh, the former Kmart zone C2 Commercial District. To the south is University Avenue, Commercial Buildings, Progress Plaza, Little Caesar, Strip Mall, all zone C2 Commercial District. And to the east is Hy-Vee Fast and Fresh Gas Station, Caribou Coffee, and Platt Storage. Zone C2 Commercial District. To the west is former Hy-Vee Grocery Store, Walgreens, and those are all zone C2 Commercial District. The site is located abutting the University Avenue corridor, which was recently transferred from the state of Iowa to the city of Waterloo for jurisdictional maintenance and ownership purposes. This portion, this portion of frontage road area was not part of the transfer of jurisdiction, but abuts the corridor. The university corridor is a commercial corridor in this portion, but has seen some vacancies along the corridor in recent years. City staff is working to create better traffic flows more pedestrian accommodations and options along the corridor, as well as improvements for business expansion, redevelopment, and location. The request to vacate the university frontage road in this area would appear to help the redevelopment of the site, eliminate a needed excess right-of-way for the city of Waterloo and return it to the tax rolls, and help create outlaws for the development closer to the roadway. The redevelopment of the Kmart site will be a big project for the future of this corridor and will involve the reuse of the former Kmart building and demolition of the outlaw development in front of the former building. The former Hy-Vee sits, the former Hy-Vee site also sits to the west of this area, has no frontage road and could have a similar reuse demolition feature with outlaw development. The addition of the right in right out at this location, the five lane concept west of progress and other improved traffic layouts, turning movements, and aesthetic designs have been constructed for the improvement of this general area. The vacate request went before the Planning, Programming, and Zoning Commission on November 10th, 2020, and was recommended for approval. The request was never sent to council, and since it has been over a year, the request must go back before the commission. At Tech Review on December 6, 2022, there was discussion by the applicant and staff about relocating utilities and which utilities would need an easement over them. The applicant planned to set up a meeting with the utility companies, the engineering department, and the planning department to discuss the placement of the utilities and the easements associated with the utilities. Tech Review noted at their meeting on January 3, 2023, that no utility meeting had been set up Fine with Mid-American Energy stated the easement for utilities will need discussed and agreed on before sending the request to council. Therefore, staff recommends that the request by the City of Waterloo to vacate approximately 0.8 acres of University Avenue frontage road located near University Avenue and Progress Avenue in front of the former Kmart site at 3810 University Avenue be approved for the following reasons. The request to vacate would not appear to have a would appear to have a positive impact for the redevelopment of the former Kmart site. The request, the requested area is owned by both sides by the same ownership and thus does not appear to be needed for public right of way, pedestrian, vehicular, or any traffic purposes. The request to vacate would help for redevelopment of the abutting site by creating additional land for a gas station and two additional commercial buildings closer setbacks, core building locations, or additional area for parking, etc. Subject to the following condition that any easements needed for utility purposes be retained over, under, and upon the area to be vacated, said easements will be included on the plot of survey for the vacate request. Great. Any initial questions? What, what is, how does it connect on the other side? To progress? Or to no, to the other side. Uh, runs in front of Kmart and goes up to the Hy-Vee gas station in Caribou. And then there's, there is. Does the road stop, though? Or does it go all the way through? 
So then how would that work if it's, does that, maybe you just said, but I'm, I'm not clear on how that's going to change access. If you're up, if you're going to that high V, if they remove the right of way and like remove that road, is that what would happen or no? No, there's still, just... there's still access. There's still that intersection there. There's a mm -hmm. um, signalized intersection there this on university. Like there's a signal right the gas station yeah. like over yeah. here mm -hmm. and this is the, so but now you can go straight through. Yeah, to progress, but you could yeah. come out here and go that way. Okay. This is Schrader with staff. Um, it's my understanding that um, High V Gas has expressed some concern on that and on the loss of yeah of that direct traffic. Um, I know that as part of the conceptual site plans for the redevelopment of the site, they are showing internal. Um, access paths that would still potentially allow uh, movement coming off of that um, current intersection of the University Avenue frontage road um, and University Avenue there that could still potentially go west and, and go through the, the new um, access, the, they'll be private uh, access roads through the development or alternatively, yes, exit out onto University Avenue and, and go around to progress. I just know, well, is this time for discussion? Or, yeah, I just know that in the Cedar Falls, with the way that that whole thing went down and where those businesses are, it's just a cluster, in my opinion, of how you get from one to the next without having to go back onto the road. And I just want to make sure that we're not making this just and not even just for Hy-Vee, but for whatever future thing is going to be in here. What are we actually asking them to do? How is that going to feel living in that, I guess? Are you going to always have to go back out to university? And is that going to be problematic? Or So if you see page 27 of the packet kind of has the um, conceptual layout that even though this would be vacated there would still be uh, still keep an access there a, a, a drive that's that may get you to the where the right in right out was uh, installed on the University Avenue and then there would be kind of a main drive coming north from there that would then veer and head west from there essentially in the middle of the former Kmart parking lot they're proposing an outlot south of that east-west access and west of the north-south access there that would um, sit right on top of the proposed vacant area. So although that would become a private access, um, there would still be that option for vehicles to go that way or to exit out onto University Avenue. It was my understanding that they're um, planning storage units there. Is that what in most of it was going to be at the Kmart? Yeah. In the actual indoor storage oh. in the Kmart building will be what most of that building is used for. And then do we know what else will go in around it? There, he's proposing outlots oh. um, around it for um, development. So like there, there'd be th three outlots on the south side. Um, they don't have confirmed developments on there, but you know he's identifying potentially like a gas station for one, um, maybe like a, a small strip mall for the others, or potentially a restaurant. Is that what you're talking about? Those outlots? No. And they're going to create new ones, the, like in the parking lot. Essentially. I think the, we'll the problematic part of the, that road is. Um, where it where it connects with progress, it really cuts off that lot is really small. That corner, what was it formerly like a mattress store? And before that, a flower ammo. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. And I think that road, that lot is is pretty small right now. And I think um, they want to have the ability to basically rework that um, to uh, be efficient for putting in different tenants. Yeah, because that wouldn't work right currently for a gas station. No, it's too small. 
there they don't haven't submitted something that's in here that shows the future lot configuration they were looking to be on the agenda with a preliminary plot as well but um, I think they're they're kind of slowing that down trying to um, there was the rezone that we did mm -hmm. um, last month the special permit and now the vacating and then they'll be hopefully assuming everything is approved back with a preliminary plot and then a final plot laying out the whole site into four lots one bigger lot for the former Kmart building and then the three out lots this is blank with staff the preliminary plot is on this agenda oh okay <laughs> I'm sorry I was, well there you go if you want to see the lot configuration it's later on in the agenda Seventy-six. Can we do this together? Like eighty-four. Eighty-six. Would it help to have the SAC report on this? On the preliminary plat to kind of accompany. I know we didn't amend the agenda that way, but we certainly can. This is Blanco staff. So for the staff report on. Uh, for, for the preliminary plot, the applicant is requesting to plot the property in question for the purposes of creating a four lot commercial subdivision located at and adjacent to 3810 University Avenue. And as mentioned before, the sidewalk along Progress Avenue should be required with the preliminary plot. The applicant is requesting a preliminary plat for the former Kmart site for a four lot commercial subdivision. The applicant is showing an indoor storage facility and three other lots for commercial uses. The existing University Avenue frontage road is being vacated as part of a separate request. A new access drive will be, will be provided within the plotted area to serve the four lots. The University Progress Edition would include four lots. The proposed lot sizes range from 1.1 acres to 7.76 acres with an average lot size of 2.9 acres. The plot is 11.94 acres in total. The applicant plans to sell a 0 0.08 acre parcel to the neighboring property owner to the north in the northwest corner of the site as the area was excluded from the recent rezone request. The outlaw to be sold to the adjacent property owner is also labeled as outlaw A and needs to be changed to outlaw C. Outlaw A is right of way area that will be dedicated back to the city. Outlaw B is designated as right of way. The plot is currently missing some information. The request will not be submitted to city council until the corrections and missing information is provided. At tech review, there was discussion by the applicant and staff about relocating utilities and which utilities would need an easement over them. The applicant planned to set up a meeting with the utility companies, the engineering department, and the planning department. At the tech review meeting on January 3rd, 2023, Schrader stated that the plat was unusual and may need some updating to clarify details. Engineering noted they will need they will still need to review the updated plat. Therefore, staff is recommending approval that the request by Man Road Storage LLC for the preliminary plat of University Progress Edition. A four lot commercial subdivision be located at and adjacent to 3810 University Avenue be approved for the following reasons. The plot would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding area or on the traffic conditions in the area. The plot will create an additional infill development site in the primary growth area and with the following conditions that the plot has all, accu all accurate required information prior to the preliminary plot being sent to to the city council and sidewalk be installed along progress avenue with necessary easements or dedicated right of way okay. 
Can we not require that they have all of that worked out before they bring it to us? This is Schrader with staff. So we, we work with the engineering firms that prepare these plats and we, um, we try to get them to have as detailed and accurate uh, as information on their um, upfront. Um, sometimes that doesn't always work out. And so then it's a kind of a balancing act between trying to keep them on track and moving forward. And if we feel that most of the stuff is generally there and it's you know kind of clear the general intent and there's just some cleanup stuff, then we'll as staff suggest that it's okay to, to put it on the PNZ agenda, noting that it won't go forward to the council until it's finalized, but certainly is preferred if it's yeah. cleaned up. I don't feel comfortable making a recommendation on something that's going to be revised quite a bit still, because if it's coming from us, it's a recommendation of whatever's been presented to us. And I don't know if we have enough information yet to know, unless, unless others feel like we do. If there's a lot of remaining questions, I don't know that I would want to pass that as a recommendation to council that the end result might look different or far more detailed. It doesn't make well, when we get me. final plat, because we'd have to vote on final plat as well, wouldn't we get more of the detailed version then? Um, this is Trader, the staff, yes, other than uh, generally speaking, the difference between the preliminary plat and a final plat is the preliminary plat is the more detailed document. The final plat generally has less information sure. as it doesn't get into like Yep. contours, yep. the actual utilities and infrastructure. It's more detailed on the lot layout, dimensions, legal description, and being that final legal document that once approved and recorded is what you can Could the preliminary you know, be presented with that same in the in our packet then too though, with the more detailed version. Say that the, one more the time. prelim plat as well be attached in this packet. Um, when the final plat's presented as well. Oh, sure. That that's something yeah. we we could. If there's tweaks to the preliminary plat, if the planning commission does make a recommendation of approval on it, and then if there's tweaks before it goes to city council and the final plat comes back, yeah, we can put the preliminary in there as well, just so it's kind of clear what some of those tweaks mm -hmm. were. Yeah. I'm just concerned about process. Is that what's the function of this group is to make a recommendation based on the information and the facts. So sure. how can we do that if we don't have all the information or if there's a significant amount missing? How much can it vary? I mean, um, this, this trader with staff, the, the subdivision ordinance um, has very vague wording on that. So there's yeah. no set specific amount. Okay. Is there someone from the engineer Hall and Hall engineers either on the phone or Zoom or here? Yes, there's both. I don't. I guess I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, we can. Um, okay, um, Susan Fornash from Hall and Hall engineers. Um, we pretty much have all of the requested revisions um, updated on the preliminary plat, but some staff said that they would take it to PNZ without those revisions. Um, and then we could just get those to them before city council. We didn't submit it because I knew the packet had already gone out. Um, and I guess I don't think that the, the revisions that requested are, are that big of a change to what you guys have in your packet right now. So, I, I mean, I, it was just basically like some labeling of things that they requested and their revisions. I mean, the overall lots aren't going to change. We did add a, a utility easement along um, the the frontage road vacation, so all those existing utilities would be contained within an easement that were currently in the, the frontage road. So I don't think that shows up on the, the preliminary plot you guys have right now. Are there follow-up questions for her or... The applicants also on the, the call if you have any questions for them. I'm not sure if I'm seeing on any of these documents a very clear, clear outline of where these lots are actually going to be. That's a question too. I don't see. Yeah, I don't actually it, see the it. The conceptual plan isn't 
in this packet, I don't think. This is Schrader with staff. Yeah, th they, uh, they pulled the conceptual plan. Yeah, we, we plan. pulled that conceptual. Yeah. Right, they did have one early on, but they pulled that. Um, but page 85 is, it, it, it is, you're looking at a, a full size sheet that's been reduced to eight and a half by 11. So it can be very difficult to read and it is a little busy, but that is the page <laughs> that shows all four lots. Um, you might be able to see it a little better on the screen, but you've got the big lot at the north end uh, housing the existing uh, former Kmart building and then a lot in the southwest corner that covers what is the, the former mattress store, the former uh, Flowerama building, the a big chunk of the frontage road to be vacated, and then a little bit of the parking lot yet on the other side of that to make that a more usable size lot. And then in the southeast corner, two lots, one that only has a little you know, kind of narrow strip of frontage to get it access, and then the other one that's along the existing uh, frontage road. So, kind of the two back-to-back -back ones there is the four, the proposed four lot layout. This is Commissioner Wilbur. So, based on this on this page, then, in order to keep those two lots in the southwest corner from being landlocked, they're going to have to keep that as an access easement. Is that Correct. Um, south. You mean southeast corner? Sorry, southeast. Yes. Um, it, because those don't have access to so progress. It, it does. It. it well, you mean to university? To both. Or to either one. I mean, if if we vacate Frontage Road, right? Then they are going to have to keep some sort of access, whether it's. The, That's in there. It's a little hard to right? see, but yeah, it's in there. This yeah. line right here. And this line right here are lot lines for this back lot. Mm -hmm. So this back lot would have frontage along University Avenue right there. You're going to oh. turn off of University into there? It's right at where the existing right in, right out on University mm -hmm. Avenue is. So will you be getting into that other one off of that as well? The, 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 the one that's have? before it? Well, like. It, they have not finalized plans. Like I said, they uh, previously had a conceptual plan, but there was a lot of discussion at Tech based on the layout and access configuration, and they, it's not a finalized plan yet, but they were showing to where the southeasterly most corner lot would have essentially shared access at this point as well and a separate direct uh, access to what's kind of left of the frontage road, which will get you out to there. I mean, okay. If I may. Yes. Uh, Chad, Chad Pelly with Man Road uh, Village LLC. Um, a couple of items, if I could clarify. We, we pulled the conceptual because I think we were getting too in the weeds. We thought originally we'd show a concept with essentially a, a C store, which we've had discussions with uh, potential users of, and then multiple uh, individual users for a strip. We had to show a conceptual plan in our minds just to give most people a little bit of direction of how this might pencil out. Um, and I think that was a detriment, meaning that we, as Steph mentioned, we got kind of in the weeds and we were getting very specific to landscaping and islands and things of the nature, so it kind of worked against us. In the end, um, the market's going to tell us what they want. We may combine those two outlots into one larger strip. We may have a standalone restaurant where we show the smaller strip. So the market will kind of dictate. But overall, what we'll end up with is some new commercial lots that will have cross-access easements that get them out to both the university and progress. We will not show a public access to the site. I'm actually a civil engineer as well, and that's just bad practice to start putting traffic, which I imagine would do a cut through for safety reasons and others. However, there will be, as staff mentioned, cross easements, guarantee and access in and around the development. Um, I think from our standpoint, this is as good as we can get 
with a preliminary plat at this point without really getting something that we can then market after placing a dollar amount for the improvements needed. We've had some preliminary discussions with utility companies, and it appears as though we'll be able to accommodate relocating those into an easement um, that's more centrally located along university. And as far as the sidewalk goes um, and the other conditions, we would only request that the sidewalk be allowed to be installed and developed with lots two through four, just so that the timing makes sense, the actual design makes sense, and we're not putting something in just to tear it out. Um, but if there's other specific questions, I'd love to answer them if there are any. Uh, we, we really would like to stay the course of moving to council just to kind of keep this thing progressing, um, satisfy the bank that we've got our uses allowed and close on the property in April and start construction. Any questions for the applicant or engineer? I mean, where do where do we envision that the majority of the traffic is going to enter for the massive building itself, the the storage facility or whatever that where the main building is that going to come off of progress or do you envision that coming off of university? They'll come up, you know, uh, after this thing absorbs. Quite frankly, and most of our other ones, your traffic load becomes. Uh, somewhat negligible from an engineering standpoint, meaning with a large retail store like a Kmart, you have hundreds of cars a day. That's why you have large parking lots. Once this thing's full, most profits probably are coming off progress, and you're talking several cars a day at most. So they'll likely use the path of least resistance, which is the signaled intersection at progress. Um, is there anyone else on phone or Zoom who is planning to speak on this agenda item? Okay, and anyone else here in the chambers? Okay. Other questions by the commission? If we voted on the first one but not, right. we'll but tabled the second, second, is that still allow them to move forward for now or this is Schrader with staff um, they're obviously requesting that both be acted on but if the Commission uh, acts on the uh, vacate and tables the plat then um, they'd have to make that work at this point no timeline for either item has been identified for sending it to council um, since we don't have final details on um, easements to be retained for the vacate uh, or the uh, update to the preliminary plat, although it sounds like it's pretty close. And to reiterate, the final plat then would come back to us before we make a recommendation on approval for the city council, correct? The final plat. The, the, the final plat would come back to the Planning and Zoning Commission and, and at some point once they have it ready and then to the City Council. Okay. And typically the final plat stage is like it's just the rubber stamp at that point. All the tough stuff has been worked out. and That is certainly the intent. Yeah. <laughs> typically. Yeah. That's what I'd really prefer. Um, I think that I, I feel like there's a there's not enough clarity. I mean, no matter what business goes into those lots, they still have to think through function and flow and making sure that there's good access points and that, to me, it's like, how is traffic flowing? I mean, are we driving it? Are we trying to figure out if this is going to make sense? Because it is, so then what happens to the road? Does it just basically get cut off there where hy is, the gas station? If that lot, that new lot, one of the new lots basically just is, does that just get stopped at that point? The applicant speak to that. Yeah, so could the applicant address the cutoff point between the end of the vacate on the east end or southeast end and the public road? I think the proposal would essentially that that becomes a, a private driveway into the development, correct? 
Yeah, so essentially they still have the access to the right in, right out and the lighted intersection to the east. Then from there, there'll be a, an access straight north towards the original Kmart. That would also serve those two potential lots three and four. And then there would be also an access that moves to the E or West rather towards progress into the lot two. Um, and then along the North of lot two, there'll be a connection and a shared drive between the Kmart and lot two that also gets traffic if they choose over to lot three, four. And as you mentioned, obviously <clears throat> any car could come through progress and meander over to the high V the same way it does now. Is there something on this that's showing that that has to be true or is there still ability for that to be changed later on? What he just said. What's the question? Is there something on here that we're, we would be approving today that is confirming that what he just said is the way it has to be if we approve this today or? For, for the cross easements? Yeah, like that it has to remain open or whatever that there's still access to progress. Is there something, it's still very unclear to me exactly what we're, <laughs> what we're proving. Well, they do have the access easement, mm -hmm. which is the old frontage. But isn't that what we're, they're still keeping that in. That's what this says. I mean, the access easement, I don't know. If I can answer, um, so yeah, we have an access easement shown on the, a portion of the vacated frontage road. And then um, going through lot four north to lot three, we show a sanitary sewer and um, access easement on there. And then from that point, up, right? it heads west. Um, it shows an access easement and sanitary heading west um, in progress. It's going around yeah, that it's corner just, lot. The yeah, access just easement is all staying there to the east, it would appear. And this kind of turned portion that basically just makes that lot able to be larger. Mm -hmm. The road stays exactly where you kind of drive as far as it's going to turn to the north, it's going to turn back to the west and hit to progress. Should effectively still do the same. Yeah. Our exhibits here just aren't the greatest. Mm -hmm. Could have let your truck so out. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. To me, it looks like the 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 easement or the access road or frontier road, while it changes, that it's still following the same path as far as connecting from. Am I am I looking at that right? This is Trader with staff. Kind of you're, you're looking right? at you're looking at that right. It essentially shifts the north south portion further east than currently, and the westerly end of the east west portion a little farther north. And takes this out and moves it up. Yeah, and changes it from an actual public road to a private, a private, private access. So it's going to feel it's going to feel like how you have to kind of work around Panera and Starbucks and whatever over in Cedar Falls between the mall and all of that. How you have to kind of go straight past through those buildings and go behind, you know, to kind of get over where the frontage roads stop. And or like going through Crossing Point Mall to get to Freddy's, yeah. for instance. Yeah, and it's I will just say that those things feel somewhat awkward. Like, it, it, you know, it's not, I don't know. It would. Should we just take first action on the vacate? Yes, yeah, yeah, that's, that's what yeah, I said. Yeah. Let's do the, any additional questions on the vacate? Back up to that one. Y'all, uh, if I may again, sorry. Yes. Go if ahead. we're going to table the permanent flat, honestly, there's no sense going through the vacation. Oh, sure. Um, nice. Because if something were to derail, we're still at the same standpoint. Yeah. Um, honestly, I think there's a, it's a little bit more complex than this. You know, the vacation, from my standpoint, was well underway when we came into this. And 
there are already complexities with, you know, the utility companies, unfortunately, get the opportunity to kind of put the revolver to our head and say, hey, you pay for what we want or we don't go along with it. So it's, it's at a point right now, you know, that we're kind of, I know Heidi's concerns, but I think if we're going to vacate this road, we kind of got to have all those details worked out together. If it's looking like the city would require access easements through the site publicly, well, then we're talking about essentially building public level roads, dealing with utilities, et cetera. And I'm not sure we're prepared to commit to that, quite frankly. We felt like they had pl plenty of public access to them now with the two access points still intact and would be willing to negotiate and discuss access, cross access. But typically they have maintenance requirements and sharing those expenses. And I'm not sure they're willing to do that, if that makes sense. This is Commissioner Wilbur. I think but the easements were just the utilities for the first part, right? That you were talking about, not access. Sorry, go ahead. Right. But main discussion has led around Hy-Vee's concern for cross access. Quite frankly, we don't encourage as engineers, and I doubt the city traffic engineer would encourage cut through traffic to serve the high vee I think that's why that's a right in, right out down there. And honestly, I, I felt like that was part of the motivation for vacating that public um, frontage road. Jamie Knudsen, city engineer, a um, little background for some of you, the whole intent of what and what we did with the university and providing this right in and right out, <clears throat> excuse me, was to vacate this, this frontage road. We don't want it. Yeah. The city does not want it anymore. Right. Yeah. That was the whole point of putting in the right in, right out. That's been that design all the way through university from when we did this. The other thing, as far as cross access agreements, I would point you to the Scheutz um, edition that was just recently completed. There are cross access easements for the individual lots for those users. There is nothing in there that is public for the city. Those users are going to go back and forth amongst those three buildings once they are all built, which is going to be what happens here. Um, I see no difference between this and the Scheutz edition that's already been approved by this body and council. So where the road's gonna stop then, where it is right now that goes all the way through, are they gonna do something with that or is it just gonna be cut I'm off? I'm assuming, I haven't seen site plans yet, but I'm assuming they're going to remove basically a portion of that road and it's they're gonna put buildings there and there's gonna be other things. But again, we have not seen the final this the site plan. Staff. Again, we haven't seen a final site plan, but the conceptual that yeah. got pulled essentially showed the frontage row, the existing concrete. I, I don't know if they'd rip it up and redo it or if just leave it, but essentially leaving that access from to to the right in, right out. And they certainly can, but yeah, they, there's not gonna be a public public access. That's the whole point of vacating this right. thing is I don't wanna deal with that right. it would be a, road anymore. Right. It'd be a private cross easement. Yep. Well, is there so, anything? Uh, preventing them from having a, a partial road that goes nowhere into this part of the road here. If they wanted to build something, a fence or something they could, and this could just go into nothing, or would somebody have to deal with that? Um, this is Schrader with staff. They could potentially do that unless it was somehow a, a condition of the approval ensuring that cross easement that in that direction okay we we, we have a hundred percent motivation to not do that we want access yeah. to progress to university at the right in right out in the intersection our tenants no matter who they are are going to are appreciating this because of its access and only its access and location along the newly improved university. There will be cross access. We will ensure that and I will want that. We can condition it, but like I said, what we don't wanna do is condition that we're continuing to provide a public access through the site. That's just not something we would be willing to do. So 
Mr. Schrader with staff, I would just note there was, as noted, this was whatever date it was listed in the staff report when it was before the commission as a request by the city of Waterloo. Uh, and that kind of got, um, it's been more than a year and it kind of got lost and it wasn't finalized yet. So never got sent to city council since it's been more than a year, it has to come back. There was some discussion on uh, having it be a, a request by them, but it was decided it's still cleanest at this point to just be a request by the city of Waterloo as the city engineer, Mr. Mm -hmm. Knutson noted, the city does not want this to be a public road anymore. So, you know, we are requesting that that right of way be vacated. There still is the issue of who we're gonna convey it to and, and who would have access rights across it, but we would, request that we move forward to vacate it. Okay. Why don't we take the first item agenda then on page 24, the vacate. Um, is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the request by the city of Waterloo to vacate 0.8 acres of right of way in front of the former Kmart shopping center located at 3810 University Avenue and referred to as University Avenue Frontage Road. Second. Are you involved in the project? Nope. Do, okay. Do we want to add the con the condition? Yeah. <laughs> Get to twenty four. Thank you. Um, subject to the following um, conditions at the. Recent request to vacate would appear to have positive impacts on the redevelopment of the former Kmart site and the both sides of the same ownership and thus does not appear to be needed for public right of way, pedestrian vehicular or any traffic purposes. The request to vacate would help for redevelopment of the budding sites by creating additional land for a gas station, two additional commercial buildings, closer setbacks for buildings, locations or additional area for parking subject to the following condition that any uh, easements needed for utility purpose, purposes be retained over, under, and upon the area to be vacated. Said easements will be included on the plat of survey for the vacate request. And Brandon, did you second? I did. Oh, sure. sorry. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? Is there anything we can say that if for some reason that road ends up just being a thing that goes to nothing that the city does is it the city would take care of that or no, no. like how would they not if they it's it. conveyed to but the portion that remains on Hy-Vee's side like that would be whoever owns that that lot or whoever it ends up the entity that it gets conveyed to if i'm not mistaken you mean like Ensuring potholes or fixed, well, just, or you know? just like does this just get do you just take it away like if they if they didn't actually want it to go all the way through and they don't actually do that in their final plan for whoever owns it down the road because we're making it I mean I understand what these people want to do but like what if they're not the ones that actually have it what we're doing today is a permanent thing or not permanent but it's permanent for now no matter who develops that site so if something else is somebody going to take care of this little section here and either get rid of it or not have just some road that goes to nowhere with like those diamond signs so that people don't run through it. Like is something formally going to be done to remove that section of road that is no longer going anywhere. That's not part of the vacate right no. here. Is that what you're talking about this area? But what does it do? I mean, it doesn't do anything. If this is vacated and a future developer doesn't do anything, if that's not supposed to, then there's a section of road that has no use. So is is that something the city would that just take care of? No, we're Remember, vacating it from the city of Waterloo. Yeah. Talking about the part we're not vacating. There, okay. there is a piece on the east end that's not in the vacate. Jamie Knutson, city engineer. Again, not having seen a site plan, we'll have to review that as it comes in. We're going to assume that they will continue that driveway, whatever you want to call it, onto their property, the piece through the intersection up to that vacate would be still be the city's and that would be ours to maintain. Anything beyond that point would be up to them. If for some reason as they come back with their site plan and decide to do 
to close that up, we will have to have further discussions with them about pulling that portion of the road out, doing something back closer to the intersection and changing all of that. But again, until they submit something, it's hard for us to know exactly what it is that they're intending to do and how to answer that question. And they could, you could negotiate that as part of the development. That'll be part of whatever, what we do is our whatever. review, yes. Okay. Yes. Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor, Party. state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that motion carried. Now the preliminary plan. And now back to page 80. Do we have a motion on the preliminary plan? I'll make a motion. Shirk, Commissioner Shirk. I'll recommend that the request by Man Road Storage LLC for the pre preliminary plat of University Progress Edition, a four-lot commercial subdivision located at and adjacent to 3810 University Avenue, um, be approved, sorry, um, with the following conditions, that the plat has all accurate required information prior to the preliminary plat being sent to the City Council and a uh, sidewalk be installed along Progress Avenue with necessary easements or dedicated right of way. Is there a second? Second, Joburg. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. All right, motion carries. Mr. Schrader, with staff has noted that those are just recommendations. They'll go on to the city council. Uh, also, as noted, we don't have a definitive timeline on that as there's still some updates needed before we'll be ready to submit those. Thank you. All right, the next item on the agenda is the request by C10 Investments, LLC, to vacate a utility easement in the S1 Shopping Center District located east of 115 hey. East Ridgeway <laughs> Avenue. No. They're fucking fucking up to you. Excuse me. Um, can you please mute yourself? Um, so request by C10 Investments LLC to vacate a utility easement in the S1 shopping district located east of 115 East Ridgeway Avenue. We'll have the staff report first. Just start off with staff. The applicants requesting a vacated utility easement um, on the former Schoitz Hospital site where an existing storm sewer will be relocated. Um, as you know, this area has been redeveloped over, is being in the process of being redeveloped. The hospital's been torn down and a former tunnel that went under the road has been sealed. And this sewer easement went on to their property and they're looking to vacate it. Um, the easement was used for a 15 inch, 15 inch storm sewer that served the former Schwartz, Schwartz Hospital and will be relocated off the property as it is reconstructed. Um, with the storm sewer relocated, there would be no need to continue having a utility easement. The new storm sewer will be located within the right of way of East Ridgeway Avenue. Therefore, staff recommends a request by C10 Investments LLC to vacate a utility easement in the S1 Shopping Center District located east of 115 Ridgeway Avenue be approved for the final reasons. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on traffic conditions in the area. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on surrounding area. And um, the existing um, storm sewer is being relocated within the right of way of East Ridgeway Avenue. All right, any questions? Did he skip over something? One of them got taken out. Okay. Yeah. Any questions by anyone on Zoom um, or by phone? Okay. Um, any commissioners have any questions? Anyone else here to speak on this agenda item? Anyone by Zoom or by phone? 
Okay. Shredder with staff, just a little clean up. The storm sewer had to go off the right of way and out into the property a little bit to go around the tunnel that used to be there. The tunnel's no more. They're gonna relocate the sewer. So good to vacate this easement. Is this behind scooters? Yeah. Would be east, east of this yeah. east of scooters okay. in sure. yeah. yeah, in front of where Quick Star's proposing to build. Mm -hmm. We have a motion. This is Schoberg. I'll make a motion that we approve the request by Seatown Investments LLC to vacate a utility easement in the S1 Shopping Center district located east of 115 Ridgeway Avenue. Second, sure. Okay. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carried. Next item on the agenda is request by Friends of Faith Retirement Homes LLC to vacate, dedicate, and relocate a 50-foot sanitary sewer easement and request for an encroachment agreement in the R4RP planned residence district located at 600 Park Lane. The staff report, please. Okay, yeah, the applicant's requesting to vacate, dedicate, and relocate a 50-inch um, uh, sanitary uh, Sewer easement, uh, a 50 foot sanitary sewer easement, vacating an encroachment agreement. The request to vacate, dedicate, and relocate a 50 um, foot sanitary sewer easement, locating an encroachment agreement for a future pool would not appear to have a negative impact on the area. Um, area in question has been zoned R4RP planned residence district since the adoption of zoning. O Ordinance 5446 on April 6, 2018. Uh, to North's apartment buildings, the South is apartment buildings in East San Martin, and to the East, long term care apartments and single family homes owned R3, RP, R4, RP, and R2. Under the West is apartments and single family homes owned R3 multiple residence district, R3, R4P, and R2. Uh, no buffers are required regarding this request. Um, portion of the area dedicated for the new sanitary sewer easement is located in the special flood hazard area. Um, there is an eight inch sanitary sewer um, underneath the four inch drain tile um, along Park Lane, 10 inch sewer main underneath West 9th Street, 18 inch sewer main line that serves the Friends of Faith uh, Retirement Home Facility, uh, which is being abandoned, vacated, dedicated with a new uh, 50 feet sanitary sewer easement to the south of the vacate area. Uh, future land use map designates this area as mixed residential, low, medium, high density residential, professional offices. Proposed site plan amendment would be in conformance with the future land use map. Uh, the applicants uh, requesting to vacate a sanitary sewer easement, relocate the sanitary sewer, and dedicate a new 50 foot sanitary sewer easement to the south. The utility easement being vacated currently contains an 18 inch sewer main, which will be abandoned. A new 18 inch sewer main will be placed within the newly dedicated sanitary sewer easement. Uh, the applicants are uh, planning to build a swimming pool in the future in the area. Uh, that the new sanitary sewer easement has been relocated to. Uh, the applicant uh, constructed a sleeve um, over the portion of the sanitary sewer easement where the pool would be constructed in the future. Uh, this would allow for the maintenance of the sewer without having to disrupt the, the pool that would be built over the sewer line. Uh, the applicants are requesting an encroachment agreement to be approved along with the action to dedicate the new easement. Um, they're not proposing to subdivide the property. Uh, therefore, staff recommends that the request by Friends of Faith Retirement Homes Incorporated to vacate, dedicate, and relocate a 50-foot uh, sanitary sewer easement and uh, request an encroachment agreement in the R4RP planned residence district located at 600 Park Lane be approved for the following reasons. Request would not appear to have a negative impact on the area. And two, that the uh, existing 18-inch sewer main is abandoned and that a new 18-inch sanitary sewer main is placed and relocated to the newly dedicated sanitary sewer easement area, which will serve the Friends of Faith Retirement Home. That's the staff report. Any initial questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is the applicant here? Or? Good evening. I'm Mike Young. I live at 215 Pauline Place in Waterloo, and I'm a lawyer for Friendship Village. The, it's a nonprofit corporation, and the legal name is Friends of Faith Retirement Homes, Inc. Um, and 
This has been uh, about five and a half years um, in the making. I think we met uh, with Mr. Schrader and Mr. Knudsen um, in the summer of 2017. Um, and I want to thank the, on behalf of Friendship Village, uh, thank both of you and your departments um, and the, the entire city um, because it's, it's been a complex project that rebuilding there because it was building on the existing um, site with the residents still there. Um, and then nobody realized going through COVID, uh, but um, it's been a great project. So I was just there yesterday and uh, it looks fantastic. Hopefully this is not controversial, but if there are questions, I can kind of explain um, really. I mean, the main point of what we've got here is that there was, it goes back to 1965. I think the um, uh, sanitary steward that goes through there. So that was relocated to allow for the building and then the pool um, would be a later um, phase. And so, yeah, as the, um, as it was discussed, it was, it was sleeved, basically a pipe was built. And so the sewer pipe can go within that. So the pool can be built over the top. But that's it, we're coming down. I mean, we're uh, after five and a half years, we'll have a couple more. If, if the pool gets built, that will come through. And then um, the next and kind of the last item that'll be on there is um, the area to the north with Bontrager Park, but that will be pickleball courts and, and a, a nice parking lot as well. But right now, everybody from Friendship Village is kind of catching their breath, um, moving in and, and settling in. So um, it's gone well. Any questions at all? Okay. Just any, again, thank you. To any the city. questions from anyone on, on the line or Zoom? Okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Um, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the request by Friends of Faith Retirement Homes Inc. to vacate, dedicate, and relocate a 50 foot sanitary sewer easement and request for an encroachment agreement in the R4RP plan residence district located at 600 Park Lane. That's it. Second, Schoberg. <laughs> All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carried, thank you. Okay. The next item on the agenda is a request by CGA on behalf of Chris, Chris Fischels for the final plat of the San Martin Business Park first edition of 14 lot commercial subdivision in the R4 RP planned multiple residence district in the BP planned business district located west of 4041 First Drive. The staff report. This is blank with staff. The applicant is requesting to plot the property in question for the purposes of creating a 14 lot commercial subdivision located west of 4041 Hearst Drive. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding neighborhood or land use as the area being platted is located between two existing business parks. The San Martin Business Park first edition would include 14 lots 12 tracks and one outlot. The proposed lot sizes range from 1.1 1 acres to 4.59 acres with an average lot size of 1.55 acres. The plot is 28.58 acres in total. The proposed track sizes range from 0.11 acres to 1.92 acres with a total of 6.52 acres of land dedicated to tracks. Tract A is designated for right of way. Track B and C are reserved for detention. Track D and E are reserved for right of way, Hirsch Drive. Tracks F through K are existing right of way to be conveyed to adjacent lots to the south. And Track L is reserved for road right of way, Fisher Drive. At lot A, 0.34 acres will be sold to the adjacent lot owner to the west. A deed of dedication has been submitted for the final plot. However, changes are needed to include drainage and sidewalk requirements in the document. There are some changes between this final plat and the preliminary plat that was approved by the Planning, Programming, and Zoning Commission on October 11, 2022. Lot 9 is larger in the new preliminary and final plat, so the number of lots has changed from 22 to 20. This site will be rezoned in the future to match the development, and so there 
is a consistent zoning throughout the entire site. At Tech Review, Engineering noted that there are multiple issues with the plot and the biggest issue is with the legal descriptions for tracks F through K because they do not own that property yet. Options will be given for the applicant moving forward. Schrader noted the issues with the tracks and easements will need to be addressed before the request is sent to City Council. Therefore, staff recommends that the request by CGA on behalf of Chris, Fitch Chris Fitchell's for the final plat of San Martin Business Park First Edition and the R4RP Plain Multiple Residence District located west of 4041 Hearst Drive be approved for the following reasons. The plat would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding area. The plat would not appear to have a negative impact on traffic conditions in the area. The plat will create an additional infill development site in the primary growth area. And with the following conditions that the final that the plat has all accurate required information prior to the final plat being sent to the city council and that sidewalk be installed along the west side of Hearst Drive. Any questions? Who owns the tracks F through K? Mr. Schrader, they're right of way of San Marnin, so currently would be the city of Waterloo. Mr. Sh Schrader would also add to that. We had previously taken action on that vacate, but uh, as San Marnin was former state right of way, there's sections of state code dealing with disposal of former uh, highway right of way that come into play that were dealt with um, or attempted to be dealt with um, a couple of years ago already now, but there were some issues, so there's still some cleanup actions needed with that. On the city's part or on the city's, on the city's part? part. Okay. Other questions? Is there an easement needed along for utilities along St. Martin there? Is that shown? Um, this is Schrader with staff. Uh, there are easements that will be needed. It's not currently shown. That is on the list of items that they'll need to get updated. With like, there's some low power lines, I think, that run along. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's there's actually a bunch of stuff. There's a, there's a water line. There's some fiber lines. Okay. Cool. So that's in the condition that yeah. is referenced on here? Okay. Yes. Is there anyone from Chris Fischels here to speak on this agenda item? <laughs> or anyone on phone or Zoom? Anyone else here to speak on this agenda item? All right, any further discussion or do we have a motion? I'm going to abstain. Uh, this is Schoberg. I'll make a motion to approve the request by CGA on behalf of Chris Fischels for the final plat of St. Martin Business Park, first edition in the R4RP Plain to Multiple res Residence District, located west of 4041 Hearst Drive, with the following conditions, that the plat has all accurate required information prior to the final plat being sent to City Council, and that the sidewalk be installed along the west side of Hearst Drive. I have a second. Second it. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, and one abstention. Next item on the agenda is a request by the City of Waterloo to name Private Street Mission Circle north of 501 Lakeside Street. Okay, yeah, this is Hamburger with staff. Uh, the applicant's requesting to name a Private Street Mission Circle located north of 501 Lakeside Street. The request would not appear to have a 
negative impact upon the surrounding neighborhood as proposed development has been previously approved and this action will name the private drive that development will be addressed off of. Uh, the request would not appear to have negative impact on pedestrian and traffic conditions. Uh, there's no public sidewalk located along East 4th Street. There are no sidewalks in the immediate area. Um, uh, sidewalks will be required as the area development it develops the, the property in question zone R4. RP to north is vacant land, to the south vacant land, single family residences, zoned R4, RP, R2, R2, CZ, to the east vacant land, zoned A1, to the west vacant land and north crossing development zone, CP plant commercial district. Requests would not require any additional buffers or screening. The area has a, a mix of residential development commercial uses that were developed from the 1950s to 20, uh, 2020s. Uh, property in question is uh, not located within a special flood hazard area. Um, the uh, future land use map designates this area as low density residential. Multifamily development is not in conformance with the comprehensive plan and the future land use map for this area. However, it should be noted that the future land use map is used as a guide for future development and is not absolute. The current comprehensive plan was approved in 2002. The city is in the process of updating their comprehensive plan which will include changes to the future land use map that will account for changing of growth patterns and zoning changes of the city over the last 20 years. Uh, the applicant's requesting to name a private street. Uh, Mission Circle, the engineering department has reviewed the request and concurs that the naming, um, as it does not conflict uh, with other names, uh, uh, no subdividing of the lands required. Therefore, staff recommends that the street naming be approved for the following reasons, the engineering department has reviewed the request and con concurs with the naming of the private street mission circle as it does not conflict with any other street names and recommends approval of the request. And that's the staff report. Okay, any questions? Yeah. Is, this, is this the development? Like the, this. Uh, the housing development on the east side of 4th Street. Where's the Where's the street on here? I'm sorry. I was going to say, I don't it, see the street it, either. It's, see the street. it's the driveway that circles around it. Yeah. Was the walking trail? No. No. It's just the driveway? Yep. It's basically their parking lot. The driveway oh. around oh. the parking lot. So it's how, like, that's what their addresses will be. Is. Correct. Okay. Any other questions? Anyone else here to speak on this agenda item? Margaret Sloan here, uh, representing the developer, the Annex Group. Okay. Anything you would like to add? <laughs> No, um, just here in case there were any questions. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> okay, well, do we have a, uh, a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the recommendation that the street naming be approved and that the engineering department has reviewed the request and concurs with the naming of Private Street Mission Circle as it does not conflict with any other street names and recommends approval. Second? I'll second, Parrish. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next is a request by Cedar Valley Real Estate LLC to nominate the Friedel? Friedel. Friedel Bakery located at 302 Commercial Street to the National Register of Historic Places. The applicant is requesting that the Friedel Bakery building be nominated to the National Register of Historic Places. It would appear that the request would not have a negative impact on the area, but would instead open up the potential for additional funding mechanism for the rehabilitation of the downtown area. The structure was the Friedel Bakery between 1911 and 1927. The bakery had production facilities on the first and second floors and the third floor had apartments for the employees. The building has been redeveloped into a mixed use development with 12, con 12 condos and commercial spaces on the first floor with the help of historic preservation 
Tax credits from the Iowa Economic Development Authority. The State Nominations Review Committee plans to consider the nomination on February 10th, 2023. Mm -hmm. The benefits of the nomination are that it will contribute to more redevelopment in the downtown area. In order to be nominated to the National Register of Historic Places, a nomination of a building or location must be made to the Historic Preservation Commission and the, applic and the application packet filed. The commission then evaluates the submitted material and makes a motion to either approve or deny the nomination. If it is approved, the application is then sent to the State Historic Preservation Office for review. The Historic Preservation Commission then submits the application to the Planning, Programming, and Zoning Commission for a recommendation, then submits the application to City Council for official action. The Historic Preservation Commission voted on December 20th, 2022 to approve the nomination. Staff feels that overall the, desi the designation of this area would be a benefit to the community as it would support both the preservation of the downtown area and help lead to the revitalization of the downtown area. Therefore, staff recommends that the request by the Cedar Valley Real Estate LLC to nominate the Frito Bakery Building located at 302 Commercial Street to the National Register of Historic Places be approved for the following reasons. The proposed designation would help preserve a historic property and it will support the revitalization and continued growth of the downtown area. Thank you. Any initial questions? Going to be sitting on this one as well. Does this motion have to get through council? before the February 10th date? It looked like it, didn't it? This is blank with staff. Yes, it does. Um, it has gone or it will go for public hearing on the 17th. Yep. H has gone for the action set in the data hearing and will go on the 17th for the hearing. So yeah, we, we had a short turnaround on this one. So we had to take the action to set the data hearing before PNC. Is there anyone from Cedar Valley Real Estate here on phone or Zoom that wants to speak? Any Anyone else on phone or Zoom want to speak on this agenda item? Any questions or do we have a motion? Surfling, I'll make the motion that the request for by the Cedar Valley Real Estate LLC to nominate the Frida Bakery Building located at 302 Commercial Street to the National Register of Historic Places be approved for the following reasons. The proposed designation would help preserve a historic property and it will support the revitalization and continued growth of the downtown area. Second, Mrs. Parrish. Okay, any discussion? All right, all those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? And you said abstain. Okay. okay, motion carried, thank you. All right, any further discussion? Uh, Mr. Schrader with staff, the um, update to the comprehensive land use plan progresses. We were actually um, originally hoping to have that on um, this agenda, but we're still making some um, final tweaks to it with intercog. So hopefully next month. And next month our meeting is on Valentine's Day. So if you have big plans, make sure you let Patty and John know that you won't be here as soon as possible. Um, any other discussion? Okay. Not do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. Schoberg. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.